Good morning, YouTubers. May 1st, 2015. I can't believe this is May 1st, 2015. And it's only 64 degrees out this morning. Now, I want to talk to all you folks in the northern United States. I'm kind of mad at you. I am tired of y'all sending your cold weather down here. You know, northern states, that's the ones north of the Mason-Dixon line. Quit sending your cold weather down. We'll send warm weather up if you'll quit sending cold weather down. You wait and see. We'll send some warm weather up your way. But I'm going to try to go out to reef number 12 today. And I'm going to be chilly while I'm driving all the way out there. And I've got my sweatshirts that I can put on. And I hope I get something good for you. I'm pretty sure I will. But we'll see. If I have to fish at the jetty, I'll fish at the jetty. At least the sun's going to be out and warm it up a little bit. Anyway, thank you all. And don't forget, right next to the subscribe button, take a look down there at the subscribed button. It says subscribed. You'll see a gray icon. Looks like a gear. It's not a grayed out icon, it's a gray icon. Click on that icon, check mark, send me updates. Send me updates. That way every time I upload a video, you'll get an, uh, uh, a message in your email saying that I've uploaded a video. And you can do that for any YouTube channel. I'm kind of surprised they don't tell more people about that little icon and the checkbox. Send me updates. All right, we'll get back to you in just a little bit. Well, folks, as you can see, it is rough, 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 rough out here. I had to stop at reef number five, white caps. My first fish is a pig fish. Uh, I guess I'll keep him just in case I need some bait. Yeah, I couldn't go out to where I wanted to do, reef number 12. And every mile I went, it just got a little rougher, a little bit rougher. All right, I'll get back to you in a little bit. Hopefully I'll catch something bigger. All right, Charles, my buddy, I think you're in Alabama. This was for you, my friend. And Jeff, missionaries, Jeff Pulliam, I guess is his name, missionaries in Moscow spreading the good news tough job over there I'm dedicating this fish trip to you my friend God bless you and keep up the good work let's see what we got here I'm gonna say it's gonna be a red snapper called it <laughs> first decent fish today pretty little red snapper not so little see that right there folks like I tell you all the time that's like a razor blade right there you gotta be careful, careful, careful. See you later, friend. It's just a little guy. I had a sardine on here. Something I had, an old sardine, frozen sardine from last year. Oh, a little black sea bass. Haven't caught a black sea bass in quite a while. Good to see you. That's three, four species I've caught so far out of about five fish. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Okay, boys and girls, I hope you can hear me over the wind. I'm going to, this is lesson time. This is called a sabiki rig. It's got a whole bunch of little tiny hooks on it with a little feather-like thing. Little tiny hooks. And it's basically, if you can't catch any live bait inshore, which it was my case today, and you want to try to use some live bait instead of all cut bait, dead bait, whatever, Here's what happens, not all the time, but you see you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Bought these at Walmart. Six little teeny fly-like things on there. I'm going to drop it down. Drop it down, drop it down. And it doesn't take long, folks. There it goes, there it goes. Up and down a few times. About halfway to the bottom now. Come on, don't let me down. All right, there we go, there we go. I feel him hitting it. I feel him hitting it. Boom, oh my goodness. 
Now remember, what I have six on there? Six little flies. You don't always get a full load, but there you go. There's three. Three good lively baits right there. I think these are called bar jacks. And they are very lively. But usually sabiki rigs, pretty sure just about a one-shot deal, and then they get all rusted out and no good. I'll drop it down one more time just so you can see. Those are bar jacks. Oh, bar jacks. I call them bait. I'd like to have some cigar minnows. And there's probably some down there, but nothing compared to these bar jacks that are down there right now. We'll drop it down again. One more load. Winds are still kicking up, man. The winds are kicking up. All right. Ooh. I have caught nice trigger fish actually on these. Keeper sized trigger fish. I don't know what it is. It's just real appealing to the fish down there. Little fly like thing. Called a sabiki rig. Got them at Walmart. Got them at Walmart. Another three banger. Boop. Fell off. It's all right. I can get more. All right. Lesson for today. <laughs> all right. This is on shrimp and squid again. I'm looking for my old buddies, the porgies. This was my porgy spot last week. I caught like eight or nine right here. But I know there's something down there in the name of porgy. This probably is just another red snapper. Called it. That's one of my second red snapper. He's littler than the other one. Now let him go. All right, live action, folks, live action. Oh my, shrimp and squid. Uh, it looks like everything eats shrimp and squid, folks. <laughs> Golly. Still no porgies, though, nothing for the cooler. And this is not a porgy. Doesn't feel like it doesn't have that porgy shake. Kind of got that red snapper shake. I'm going to say 14 inch red snapper. Let's see if I'm right. Red snapper. That was right. Got down the belly a little bit. All right, stop. Go back. Zero, 14 inch. Oh boy, am I good. Nah, it's just fun to catch them. Gotta let them go. Well, while we're waiting to catch some real fish, let me go ahead and tell you a, a story. Now, I can't tell you stories about fish because you can see it. Yeah, but because uh, I do it on video. Let me tell you a story about my days in, uh, in the Army when I was in Vietnam. Me and my buddy were walking the rice paddies one day. I used to be tough back then. We were walking side by side on patrol, and it was early in the morning, the sun was in her face, and my buddy just happened to be right next to a king cobra, and I saw it about the same time as he saw it, but he stepped on its tail. When he stepped on its tail, it started to lunge at him, and I reached down, and I grabbed that king cobra right behind the head. And I'll be darned if that thing didn't turn around and bite me. You bet. And so we immediately headed back for the uh, medic, and we kept that snake for five days. And I'm telling you, five days of agony, suffering, and pain. And on the fifth day, that cobra finally died. Yeah, I used to be a tough old bird. <laughs> All right, boys and girls, I moved back in. It was just rock and roll, rock and roll city out there. I'm gonna bring these old bones in toward close to the jetty. See if I can catch a redfish or some black drum. But my buddy Charles, I think he lives in Alabama. We were talking about the situation today here in America and actually around the world. And Charles, I want you to look up, if you would please, 2 Timothy chapter 3, 
and read verses one through seven. Read it twice. Because that's exactly what was predicted would happen in the last days. And that's what's happening exactly. All right, I'll get back to you guys. There's a keeper size spot tail pin fish, folks. A keeper size spot tail pin. And you know what? I'm going to keep him. Skunk is out of the boat. Took a while. Skunk is out of the boat.